the Nintendo Switch 2 has been allegedly leaked. And it turns out it's just another Switch, but switchier. Should we have expected more from this new console? And are there things we still don't know? I'm not gonna get into every last detail of these leaks, and I definitely am not gonna show them to you as I fear the wrath of the Nintendo ninjas. But headline, it looks like it's just an upgraded Switch. There are a few new things that are interesting, like a new Joy-Con design, possibly two new buttons on the back, and an extra USB-C port. But other than that, it's literally Switch 2. It might even be called that. Assuming this is real, and we don't know if it is, it still doesn't tell us everything. This does not actually confirm that there is no new quote unquote gimmick with the Switch 2. It would only confirm that the Switch 2 is similar to the Switch, but there could be a gimmick hiding under the surface. It doesn't seem like there's much of a demand for some new gimmick, and it actually wouldn't be too surprising if there wasn't one. After all, Nintendo consoles being known for having gimmicks is only really been a thing since the Wii. The GameCube, N64, SNES, and NES were all, for lack of a better term, normal consoles. Gimmicks are a tricky thing to do deal with. While they can contribute to unique styles of gameplay and bolster sales, they also can bog down games and make them difficult to revisit. The Super Mario Galaxy games are always strange to come back to because of their reliance on motion controls and pointing controls. Even playing with the Wii mode and nunchuck together, while it's an interesting way to play, feels jankier than just using a regular controller. While when Mario Galaxy was new, it just seemed like it was a cool new way to play games, we've moved on and motion controls take more of a back seat in modern games rather than being required for gameplay. The more recent Mario Odyssey's motion controls are optional and provide only a few little boosts to the gameplay if you choose to use them. I think this change in motion controls can be seen in the many complaints about Super Mario Party's compulsory use of motion controls. The upcoming Super Mario Party Jamboree will instead make these motion controls optional, which while it gives more player choice, it restricts minigame design as they will have to accommodate both playstyles. But while motion controls stuck around as a gimmick, a different Nintendo gimmick has been completely sidelined in the Switch era, the dual screen. Dual screens were seen on the DS, 3DS, and the Wii U, sort of. While having two screens works incredibly well for games, it harms the preservation of these games as they will struggle to be ported to future consoles that don't have two screens. Wii U Gamepad, I think, is an incredibly misunderstood and overlooked feature. To this day, I still prefer the system of having the gamepad more separate from the console rather than having it be the console. I really did like that you had the full game on the TV and a smaller, more separate part of the game right there in your hands. Mario Maker 2, I think, really suffered from not not having the gamepad of the Wii U, as making levels is just not as intuitive without it. Also, unlike the DS and 3DS where games have to be designed with two screens in mind, the gamepad can just be ignored if the game in question doesn't call for one, which leads to the possibility of cross-platform games. Now, there are a few cons to having a gamepad with your system. One problem is that with a gamepad, Nintendo would feel obligated to take advantage of it as a gimmick for their main first-party games. Sure, cross-platform games could just ignore it and still put their games on the console. But if the main gimmick of your console is a second little screen in your hands, you're gonna be compelled to make it a part of your main releases. And this could lead to the gamepad gimmick turning people off from the big games and making them difficult to port in the future. However, I think they struck a pretty fine balance with the Wii U, and this can be seen in the fact that many Wii U games were ported to the Switch quite easily. But one big issue with the gamepad, and probably the reason why it may not come back, is that it's just like the Wii U, which is something Nintendo has actively distanced itself from. All in all, it seems unlikely, but not impossible, that we'll get a gamepad gimmick again for the Switch 2. I think the reason we may not see it is that in the leak, the console is in fact inside its gamepad once again, meaning that you probably can't do TV and handheld play at the same time time anymore like the Wii U. But who knows what these developers are cooking. So is this new console just a if it ain't
ain't broke, don't fix it situation? Will the main gimmick of the console be something as simple as VR that'll be completely optional to most players? Are we just gonna get a more powerful Switch? Is that really it? I just think there's something else. All we've seen is a shell. We don't know everything yet. Hey, if you like this video on the Nintendo Switch, maybe you'd like to see this other video about Super Mario Party Jamboree and what's going on with Bowser in that game. You can check out that video right here. If you like what I do and want to see me do more of it, consider becoming a channel member or checking out my Patreon. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.